Hello everyone, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Scyther88 back with another video. Today we'll be reviewing a topic. And that topic, which you already know based on the name of this video, is parts of a mammalian expression vector or plasmid. Basically, uh, vector is the generic term for carrier, whereas basically we basically it is the the vector is a plasmid, which is a uh, piece of circular circular uh, DNA. Okay. So, what do we use plasmids for? What do we use these vectors for, right? Um, the most common thing is for molecular biology-wise is uh, transfection, right, into different mammalian cells. And uh, these are very routine experiments, but when you're doing your transfections, which is just basically putting the uh, plasmid into mammalian cells and seeing what, hap what happens after, uh, when you express your gene of interest, have you ever stopped and wondered when you're doing this process, what are the other components of your vector besides the gene that you cloned in? Well, if you never wondered, then I'm going to tell you anyway. So let's get started. There are many types of mammalian expression vectors, and there's no way I can cover every specific one. There's way too many. So today we're going to be using one example. And that example is shown right here. PCDNA 3.1. Many of you probably have uh, used this vector before or know someone, someone who has or used some uh, vector that's a derivative of this. This has been around for a long time and it shares many of the same components as uh, other commercial uh, vectors. So I believe it's a good example to use. As you can see in the slide, I labeled each section, each part of this uh, vector 1 through 10 and we're going to be going through each section one by one. Oh yeah, so you might also have noticed that there's a plus and a minus version of this uh, vector. And the only difference that there is that the plus version and minus version has different restriction enzymes in the multiple cloning sites, just giving you more flexibility when you're doing the cloning. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with number one. So number one is uh, called a PCMV, and this stands for the promoter derived from human cytomegal cytomegalovirus. And this sequence is, is responsible for initiating transcription or basically starting to, uh, to initiate, uh, to generate your messenger RNA. This is basically where the um, host uh, uh, DNA dependent RNA polymerase, oh sorry, this is where the host DNA dependent RNA polymerase and other trans, uh, trans, uh, transcription factors bind to, right? It's very important. Basically, this region is responsible for initiating transcription. Okay, next we have number two. What is number two? Number two is actually all the way up here, and uh, this is something called a T7. So this is the promoter sequence derived from the T7 bacteriophage, which is a, a bacteriophage, which is a virus that infects bacteria. So this promoter is only used if you supplement the T7 polymerase in your cell culture. Or you can initiate uh, in vitro transcription in a test tube using the polymerase and other transcription factors. But overall though, when we're talking about the context of a regular standard uh, mammalian cell transfection, um, this promoter here is pretty much irrelevant. It's, it's not really uh, an issue we need to pay attention to. Okay, number three. Number three, this is something probably we are most familiar with, is the multiple cloning site, or MCS. So this is the region where you use your specific uh, restriction enzymes to clone in your gene of interest to express in your cells. Um, also for this vector, if you notice, there is no um, start or stop codons. So if you're using a vector like PCDNA 3.1 or any other vector without those, Make sure to include your own uh, yin frame start and stop codons with your gene, or else you will not be able to properly translate your messenger RNA. Okay, next we are on to number four. We have some, we have something called BGHPA right after the multiple cloning site, and this stands for bovine growth hormone polyadenylation sequence. Since we have a promoter, right, our PCMV and then we have a gene of interest, we also need a termination sequence. So that's basically what that is. So this basically uh, ends the transcription and polyadenylates our messenger RNA. 
to form the stable, mature messenger RNA ready for uh, translation. Next, we have something called this F1 origin. What is this? So this is the origin of replication derived from the F1 bacteriophage. This allows the synthesis of single-stranded DNA from the vector uh, used for packaging into phage particles, right? Single-stranded DNA. Um, so basically what you do is that you take your plasma, you transform it into bacteria, right? Uh, and then you can actually infect the bacteria with different helper phages in order to start the single-stranded DNA synthesis. Again, this is more of a... Um, like for, it's, this is for like if you're doing phase studies and such, it's not again not really relevant for um, mammalian cell transfection. So more or less, we can pretty much ignore this origin um, almost all of the time. Okay, so next we're going to have six, seven, and eight, and these kind of go together. Um, but we're going to go ahead and start with number six. So six, seven, eight are kind of they kind of go together. Okay, so what is number six? So Number six is the uh, SV40 uh, uh, origin replication and termination, uh, sorry, origin replication and promoter. So SV40 is uh, simian virus 40, that's what it stands for. And um, this region contains, like I said, the origin replication and promoter sequence. And it's only relevant in cells that continuously express the SV40 large T antigen, such as the uh, HEC uh, 293T cells. So basically what happens is that in those cell lines, the large T antigen will bind to this region, this SV40 origin region, and this will initiate um, uh, replication uh, of the plasmid using the host DNA dependent DNA polymerase and also initiate transcription using the host RNA polymerase machinery. In this example though, it's specifically used for creating stably transfected cell lines. And the main reason is because of number seven, which we're going to get to right now. So number seven is the uh, is the uh, encodes the gene, uh, the neomycin gene. So this is completely is just right downstream of the SV40 uh, SV40 promoter, and this neomycin gene will confer G418 resistance to your cells. So you can select for transfected cells using cell culture media with G418. Again, this is one of those components for making stably transfected cells. And, um, and the last component is actually number eight. So we covered six, seven, now we're gonna ta talk about the last, uh, the last component of these, of these three. And the last component is the SV40 termination sequence. And this is required, of course, in this case specifically, for terminating in polyadenylation of the neomycin uh, messenger messenger RNA. Okay, so let's 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 st take a step back and review a little bit. So numbers six, seven, and eight go together, and these three allow the generation of stably transfected cells. Well, how does that work? Well, because um, um, of this SV40 origin and replication uh, sequences in cells that produce large T antigen. Okay, the large T antigen will will be will initiate. The, uh, the replication of these plasmids, so as the cells divide, they won't lose the plasmids. At the same time, it will initiate transcription of the neo, uh, neomycin gene, will, will, will give resistance to these, these newly dividing cells with these plasmids. So we can select them out with your uh, cell culture media containing G418. So cells that have not transfected will, will die, but cells that have been transfected or will be resistant to G41A and they'll grow and divide along with the vector. Again, this is only possible with cells that are expressing the large T antigen. And um, the large T antigen is not doing it directly, but is initiating it. Remember, all this replication stuff is all coming from using the host, uh, the host machinery, the host DNA polymerase and the host RNA polymerase. Okay, so that's six, seven, and eight. Number nine, what is number nine? Number nine is another origin of replication, and this is for bacteria cells specifically, the puck origin. So this allows the replication of the vector after you uh, transform your uh, plasma into uh, your competent cells, right? Usually E. coli, something like DH, DH5 alpha, something like that. Um, and this basically allows the replication of the plasmid in those cells, right? If you don't get replication, 
you won't be able to extract the plasmid after you grow the bacteria. You, you won't get anything after that. So the puck origin is actually very important. And specifically, the puck origin will give you a very high copy number. That's why I really like this plasmid. Um, it's about five to 700 copies per cell, so it's very efficient. And lastly, we have number 10, which goes along with the uh, bacteria. So this is basically what makes selection of your bacteria that have the plasmid possible, right? It's the antibiotic resistant gene. And in this case, it is uh, ampicillin, right? So without this, you won't be able to select out the bacteria that, 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 have, that have been successfully transformed, right? Whether you're picking plates or when you're growing them up um, f uh, after inoculation in order to extract the plasmid. Okay, and that's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end and just some uh, final thoughts that I have. Um, there are many types of million expression vectors uh, and I cannot cover all of them, but they all share many common elements that I've explained here. There are, are genes that can be encoded on either strand of the plasmid indicated by the arrow direction. Let me just go ahead and go back. You see what I mean? For example, all of these are uh, have the arrow going this way, but then for example, this ampicillin uh, gene has the arrow going the other way. Remember, this is double-stranded DNA, so it can, the gene can be encoded on either strand. Okay, pre oh, sorry about that. Let me go next and next. Okay. And lastly, I just want to say, you want to do your research uh, regarding the best vector uh, according to your specific needs, okay? And uh, I don't know what experiment you're doing or what, what, what vectors you need, but based on your own specific needs, you have to pick the correct plasmid. And that's very important, actually, because you don't want to be using the wrong plasmid and then end up not having your experiment work. Then you realize, oh, you know, crap, I need to do this. I, I should have used this instead. So make sure you do, you do the right, uh, correct research before you start your experiment when choosing a cloning vector. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I just wanted to say thanks for watching everyone. I really hope you found this video helpful. And please like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Scyther88 signing off.